Howdy friends, music lovers, Wes here checking in with another episode of The Vinyl Survivor. This is where I talk about 10 albums that were new to my ears, recently brought into the collection, let you know what I thought of each one, give you a little bit of background on each one, and let you know whether I liked them or not, whether they're going to be staying in the collection. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into this episode. First album we have to talk about today is the fifth studio album from ELO, otherwise known as Electric Light Orchestra. This is Face the Music, 1975. Somewhat of a change of pace for the band, a lot of new members. Uh, you know, ELO is, is led by Jeff Lynn and sort of cycled people in and out over the years. Uh, but this was definitely a very... Uh, very successful album for them. Uh, you got you know Fire on High, which is just that awesome, awesome instrumental track that still gets played a lot on on classic rock radio today, and it's a track I really love. It's one of those tracks that sort of changes direction right in the middle, which I really love, and it's instrumental and it's just a awesome track. And then you got uh, Evil Woman is on here and Strange Magic are two other really really big well-known ELO tracks and just a just a good album through and through. I really enjoy this one quite a bit. And insert here some lyrics on there. And ELO are on the, on the United Artists Jet Records label. Um, I'm used, more used to seeing a Jet Records label for for uh, ELO records, but uh, this one just has a UA with the Jet Records logo on it. Uh, TML in the Dead Wax, TMLM in the Dead Wax. So that is the master lathe at the Mastering Lab in LA is where this was cut. No, uh, no initials or anything that I see as far as who did the cutting. Uh, but just a, 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 good, a good classic album from ELO and uh, staying in the collection. Okay, the second album I have to talk about, still staying in the 70s here, but this is from a completely different band. This is the final album from the, from the German band Can. Uh, this uh, is their 11th album, as I said, their final album. This album was actually released after the band broke up, in, so this was released in 1979 and just comprised of some various tracks and whatnot they had lying around to put together. Uh, not real great, definitely not a good Can album. If you're looking to start into Can, uh, I don't, I don't, I haven't listened to a lot of Can, but um, I'm hoping this is the worst of it. And being the worst of it, I still appreciated this. I still found this enjoyable. Uh, yeah, wasn't mind blowing. wasn't Didn't make me want to run out and buy buy more Can records. But but from what I understand, this is the, this is as bad as it gets. And, and as bad as it gets, it's still pretty good in my opinion. So uh, it's it's sort of an electronic German, electronic, somewhat electronic German rock sort of sound, uh, kind of progressive, uh, you know, pretty enjoyable stuff here. You'll see this is a this is a reissue I bought. I bought a couple of these uh, for twelve bucks. Um, sort of has this this gold this gold and black. Thing on here, which is questionable. I'm pretty sure most of these are from from CDs, and they're they're kind of gray market kind of reproductions or reissues, if you want to call it, um, out of Europe somewhere, I think. And there is the sort of custom label. Uh, this album is also known as Out of Reach uh, or just Can, but yeah, Can self-titled or Out of Reach. It's, it's not amazing, but it's, it's good enough. I enjoyed it, and I'm going to be keeping this one. Okay, changing genres just a bit here. Uh, we have the 18th album from Dolly Parton. This is New Harvest, First Gathering from 1977, year I was born. Uh, this is Dolly Parton trying to do a little more of a pop crossover kind of album. Uh, still very country, but... In the late 70s, when countries tried, a lot of country artists tried to move towards more of a pop sensibility and and do that. So, uh, Light of a Clear Blue Morning is on here. Applejack is on here, a really popular Dolly Parton song. Uh, her cover of My Girl, which she redid as My Love. Got high, Your Love Has Lifted Me Higher and Higher, another cool cover song she did. Uh, 
really enjoyable album from Dolly Parton. I love, I love Dolly Parton, so this was enjoyable for me. Uh, really cool gatefold on this one. Love the artwork there and the, the liner notes and everything. It was pretty cool. And it is on the RCA Black Victor label with Nipper there. Uh, this one as well has TML-M in the dead wax. So this was also cut at the Mastering Lab in LA on the Master Lathe. And, and yeah, I mean, if you like Dolly Parton, definitely pick this one up if you can. I picked this one up for a buck at a flea market somewhere. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good, enjoyable album, and enjoy it. So it's staying in the collection. Uh, staying in the 70s still. We haven't left the 70s yet. Uh, this is the third studio album from Blondie, Parallel Lines, from 1978. Uh, definitely their kind of breakthrough album. Uh, you got One Way or Another on here, Heart of Glass is on here. Really good Really good album from them, and, and really well known. Uh, uh, and a nice insert with lyrics on it. And that's on the Chrysalis label. Um, yeah, just really enjoyable rock and roll, kind of 80s new wave rock kind of stuff here. Yeah. Great album all the way through, really enjoyable, a lot of high energy, very youthful feeling, just uh, just some great stuff. So Blondie's Parallel Lines, absolutely staying in the collection. All right, next up, moving all the way out of the, uh, all the way out of the 70s, all the way to today, 2015, we have the latest album from Panda Bear. This is Panda Bear Meets the Grim Reaper. Panda Beer is, uh, Panda Beer, Panda, I'm thinking got my mind on beer. Uh, Panda Bear is a sort of a neo-psych artist, very sort of dreamy process, kind of vocally. A, a lot of people say it has sort of a Brian Wilson kind of sound to it, maybe a modern version of a Brian Wilson. Uh, really cool sort of electronic loops and sounds and cool sort of sort of sounds from, from uh, Panda Beer here, Panda Bear. Uh, very similar, to, uh, if you're familiar with the last one, Tomboy, uh, sort of in, along the same lines here. Uh, another pretty neat gatefold there. Uh, two LP set on this one. There's the custom labels, uh, just black vinyl. I believe there was a, a uh, colored vinyl version of this uh, available, limited edition kind of thing. Uh, but. I didn't get this one immediately when it came out, so I just got the black vinyl version. But, you know, if, if you like Panda Bear, uh, this is another good album, an, an enjoyable album, and uh, just sort of a good example of sort of that neo-psych, uh, electronic sort of feel and vibe and, and good stuff. And I, I definitely enjoyed this one uh, a good bit and uh, staying in the collection. All right, moving back, way back to possibly the 50s, maybe early 60s here. Uh, not sure when this was recorded. It was released in the late 70s, early 80s. This is the Leuven Brothers with songs that tell a story. Uh, you probably know the Leuven Brothers most from that iconic album cover, The Devil is Real, where they're sort of standing on this sort of rock outcropping and everything's on fire around them. Um, Leuven Brothers do sort of a folk gospel kind of thing. Definitely a very interesting group. They both they had. Uh, I know one of the br one of the brothers had a real hard time, uh, sort of living that very strictly religious life and had problems with with drugs and alcohol and and whatnot. Um, but this is definitely. Uh, these are recordings from, I should say, recordings from a, a, radio, a religious type radio show kind of sound. Uh, you know, maybe Southern Morning sort of uh, Appalachian radio show. Uh, so you got very religious themes on here, but the music is excellent. Uh, they, they do a really good, you know, songs that tell a story. They're really good storytellers. I, I definitely enjoy hearing this kind of music, you know. It, it, goes back to my folky kind of roots, uh, the Florida Folk Festival. It definitely has that sort of southern folk feel to it. Very good, good musically, very intricate, well played, 
and you know you can sort of ignore uh, the the lyrics and just enjoy the music itself. So this is really cool to find. I picked this up for a buck as well at a flea market. And as I said, this was released by Rounder Records in the uh, and they did these in the like seventy nine or eighty or somewhere. Uh, but there is the uh, Rounder Records label. This one even came with an insert to uh, order some more stuff from Rounders Record, Rounder Records to get a catalog from them and sort of go through their catalog at the time before we had the internet. <laughs> okay, moving on to something from the 80s, something that's not typical for me from the 80s. Uh, this is a hard rock, almost metal kind of band. This is the band Hellenbach. Uh, this was their first LP released in 1983, titled and Now Hear This. Uh, Helen Bach are a UK, as I said, very hard rock, heavy, early sort of metal. It sounds more like just a really hard rock to me than metal. Didn't Can't say I really cared for this. You know, I'm not really that hard rock, metal kind of guy. It has to be something... It takes a lot for me to really like something from that genre. So this one really didn't do it for me. It was just sort of, um, just sort of mediocre in my opinion. Um, there's the band there. A little bit of liner notes from them. And they are on the Neat Records label. Uh, this was just another dollar pickup for me. Something I saw and it caught my eye, and I thought, what the heck? I'll give it a try. It's a buck. Uh, in the end, it wasn't for me, but. Uh, if you're if you're into hard rock or metal kind of stuff, uh, maybe check them out. See see if you like them. Okay, next up we have going back into the 2000s. We're on 2014. This is the latest release from the Montreal band Star. This is titled "No One Is Lost." Two LP set here. Uh, Stars are an indie rock collective, kind of one of those big kind of multi. Large groups, I guess you could say, um, kind of like Arcade Fire, I guess you could say, lots of members in the group and make really interesting music. They've always had sort of an electronic influence on their music, but this one is very heavily, heavily electronic influenced, um, almost to the point where you could call this synth pop, and this, this, the cover sort of it describes that quite well. Um, and there was a little sort of paragraph here that I pulled from Wikipedia that I thought pretty much described it really well. And I'll just go ahead and read that real quick. It says, The album's recurring themes of mortality and loss were in inspired by the cancer diagnosis of longtime manager Eoan O'Leary during the writing process. Campbell explained the title, album's title further. The record is called No One Is Lost because that's actually a fucking lie. We are all lost, we are all going to lose this game, and as you get older, you lose people more and more. I just wanted to close my eyes and jump and hope that was true. Life is lost, love is lost, and loving people is about accepting that you're going to have to say goodbye to them. That is why it's fucking brave. That's Star's ethos. This life is very heartbreaking and sad, so let's get completely fucking arsehole and listen to some Dionne Warwick. So... You know, very dark themes here, but it's it sort of takes that very synth pop mentality of just saying "fuck it, let's just have some fun and party," and you know, try to try to forget about the the sad parts of life. So, really, really cool uh, concept and themes here, and really fun. And showed the gatefold yet? Is that cool uh, roller rink? I'm pretty sure just about every roller rink in the world have has this kind of carpet in it. Uh, very memorable. I'm pretty sure. The one I went to as a kid had that carpet in it. And this is a 2LP set on awesome neon pink vinyl. Uh, really cool. So yeah, Stars, No One Is Lost. Took me a little while to get into this album just because it was quite a change of pace for the group. But I, the more I listen to this, the more I love it. And uh, yeah, highly recommended. Uh, if you like synth pop, check it out. If if maybe you're more into an indie rock kind of thing, check out some of their earlier albums uh, more. In Our Bedroom After the War is probably one of their best albums overall. Next thing I have to talk about here is uh, the third album from Zola Jesus titled Conus Conatus from 2011. Not sure I'm pronouncing that just right. Zola Jesus is, is an ambient synth pop electronic 
female vocalist kind of thing. Uh, very popular today, something I buy a lot of. So uh, really cool to find this, pick it up, add it to my collection. Definitely do enjoy this quite a bit. So it comes in on the Sacred Bones label. There's the insert on that one, pretty neat. There's the custom label on that one. And yeah, just really not much more to say about this. It's very sort of simple, stripped down, synth pop with female vocals kind of thing. Definitely a genre I enjoy quite a bit and uh, staying in the collection. Okay, and last but not least, uh, go got one here from the 60s, to very, just barely. This is the fourth studio album from Tim Buckley titled Blue Afternoon from 1969. This is his first album on uh, Frank Zappa's straight label and definitely has a sort of a, a jazz folk sort of vibe to it. Definitely really awesome, awesome music, you know. I've, I've never really found what the big deal about was with uh, Jeff Buckley, his son. Tim Buckley is awesome, and this is really great. Uh, it can be quite depressing. It's very, it's very blue. It's very sad. Yeah, you, you better be in a good position uh, emotionally before you listen to this. Otherwise, it's going to make you want to slit your wrist or something. It can be that depressing at times, but just awesome, awesome music here. Uh, it, folky and jazzy at the same time, and it almost has like sort of a, an English vibe to it, English folky kind of vibe to it. It's the Straight Records label, pretty cool looking label, and the, the only thing I think I have on Straight Records, I don't really have any Zappa. I have a few pieces of Zappa, but... I think they're all on other labels. So yeah, Tim Buckley's very sad, depressing uh, folk music here. Folk, jazz kind of stuff. But excellent music, excellent lyrics, and uh, thoroughly enjoyed this and glad to have it in my collection. I uh, actually found this one at Goodwill for 50 cents, which was a killer score to find this at Goodwill. So that's a great way to end this episode. Uh, 9 out of 10 made it, so a pretty good collection of stuff. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, leave me some comments below if you have any questions or comments about any of these albums. Um, as always, this is a variety channel. I do a lot of different things here. Talk about beer, records, photo photography, cars, whatever I feel like it. So hope you really find something you liked here, and if you do, please subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again real soon. Cheers.